Hello and welcome to the Workforce Connection. The Workforce Connection is a co-production of the Fort River Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Fort River Community Media, and Bristol Community College. Every month we bring to you the issues impacting the workforce and employers throughout the southeast region of Massachusetts. My name is Rob Mellion. I am the host of the Workforce Connection. And in this segment, we're going to take a step back and kind of revisit a story that we covered about three years ago. We're going to talk about the evolution of the workforce, the Center for Workforce and Community Education down on the Wall Street, and also about what's been happening with the Workforce Institute. Now, to do this, we have brought in the Acting Vice President of Workforce Development at Bristol Community College, Paul Vigent, and we also have with us Dean Aguilar, who is the Dean of the Workforce the Center for Workforce and Community Education over at Bristol Community College. Thank you both for being on the show today. Hey, Rep, thanks for inviting us. We have got to, uh, we've got to shorten the name for the, uh, the center on the Wall Street. I call it the Workforce Center personally, and the reason why I say that is because in my observation, BCC has developed a center for workforce development that is second to none in Massachusetts. I mean, in my mind, you guys are the Center for Workforce Development in Massachusetts. It's very oh, impressive what's been accomplished oh, in the last three years. And I think that's the reason why it sticks in my mind in that way. Before we talk about the center, what about your roles? What is it that you each do at the center and also uh, in conjunction with the Workforce Institute at Bristol Community College? Sure, so the Workforce Institute is one of the divisions of the community college and our focus is really on adult literacy and on workforce development. So Carmen Aguilar, our dean, she and her team with Rob Vitello and Nikki um, Andrade have done a, a fabulous uh, job reaching out to the community, providing uh, short-term workforce training programs that help people get jobs and help people develop the skills that make them competitive for jobs in the new economy. And Carmen's really been the leader of our team down there. And then really nuts to bolts. Mm -hmm. I, mean, it, I remember when this was a theory and then out of nowhere we had the workforce center down on Duval Street emerge and now I mean it's a beautiful facility, an active facility. It is. And it seems like the center has its hands all across Bristol County when it comes to workforce issues. That doesn't happen by accident. It takes an entire team to do the work. <laughs> Carmen's had a really uh, focused view on how to achieve that. It helps that she's an engineer and she's uh, out output oriented. So it's it's uh, strategic. It's, uh, it, it, she's strategic. It's intentional. Uh, it's responsive and reflective of what the needs are in the community. So, for example, in our corporate education program, which Rob Vitello directs for Carmen and for the college, that's a program that three years ago basically was an idea. And last year that was a $1.2 million business for us. We've got n a number of companies in Fall River in the industrial park. We're working on a manufacturing project. Common and her team have worked with the financial institutions, with Bay Coast Bank and other financial institutions. So we really have this niche set of products that help and respond to corporate needs. Also in the medical space, retraining medical assistants and people doing medical coding. So Carmen really deserves a lot of the leadership credit for that and, and, and it's a way for people in the community to think of BCC as a 52 week on ramp. We have programs starting with our literacy programs that work you right through job training programs. At that point you can make a choice, maybe go get a job right away or you keep that job as a part time job like so many community college students and matriculate ultimately to get a certificate or a degree. So Carmen's team really leads this 52 week on ramp. So a question I have is, what motivated Bristol Community College? What were the factors that motivated Bristol Community College to become a leader in workforce education? Carmen, you want to take a first one? You deserve all the credit, so what were you well, thinking about? Well, the commitment of the college is to support the region. You know, we're part of the community, our business are part of the community, and we have a significant good reputation in providing um, education for associate degree and credit programs. 
and we have a lot of talent and expertise that we could be using to benefit also our business. So that was the, you know, the initial concept of creating an arm to start our business with our expertise, attending to their needs and respond to those who were, you know, identified as some, some needs. In general, that was the seed for creating an arm for workforce. Through the years and an evolution, our mission become a little more uh, sophisticated and it has been more to listen and to partner with the employers to identify the opportunities to grow together, to reinforce uh, you know, the workforce aspects in each of, of, of the companies and find the resources and the tools and the programs that they need here locally and that could be delivered locally through the community college. So how can we reinforce the economy working together uh, as a workforce arm to develop the, uh, our stronger business together? Now, another observation that I have is that many community colleges across the country have established some variation of a workforce center. Uh, several in Massachusetts have some variation of a workforce center, and I've observed there are workforce centers in name, and then there are workforce centers that actually are making a difference. What are some of the factors that make the workforce center here and the institute here at BCC unique? I'm going to build off Common's first point. It's listening to the clients, the customers and the students and making sure that we offer those students and those businesses the product that they need, right? Everybody's got stuff to sell, right? And schools have an education product. So for a person, if you think of the recent discussion at the national level about making community colleges free. That's the same conversation that happened 150 years ago after the Industrial Revolution when it was, re when it was recognized education. that high schools needed to be the threshold. So listen, we're, we've advanced as a society 150 years in our technology, in how we make things, in the skill sets you need to work. So the idea of being responsive to the community college is the, is the place that is responsive to those needs. And that's, that's been a big driver for us. The state holds the community college, as Carmen was saying, to our service mission, which is to serve the Commonwealth. And in doing so, we need to make sure that if we're offering programs that are aligned to get people jobs, that two years out, three years out, they have jobs in those fields that are good paying jobs. And that's what we try to do. That's, that's the gel, learner by learner. Yeah, and our approach is go similar to company by company. You know, we got to make the company stronger because they live in our backyard. We are neighbors and we're part of the same community. So our approach is really focused on the solid uh, productive partnership, which makes probably a very different approach than other uh, could probably working with. And our commitment that whatever it takes, we're going to do it together. So let's flesh this out a little bit. Who are your stakeholders? Well, let me start with the corporate side. So every company that's in Fall River that needs a workforce to be competitive and to remain in business over the next 50 years is our customer. So from that point of view, we work with them, as Carmen says, and try to understand two things. How, how are they working now, and how many people are going to be retiring, for example, over the next 10 or 15 years? And how can the community college make sure that without any growth, that company is still in business 15 years from now because they have a workforce that's been replaced and, and for those old retirees to move on and the new folks to move in. So we're very good at that in the manufacturing space, in the health occupations, in the social service occupations, in catch at our hospitality and tourism institute. And then secondarily, for those companies that are growing, the companies that, and you see this all the time, it's your members. The companies that are your best members are those who are so focused on their own enterprise. How can we be better? Every day, how can we get to the job better, serve our customers better, make the best product we can make? And those are the customers that we work with as our best clients in the business community. On the other side, on students, we serve students. The traditional community college has about two-thirds of its students from high school, so we're, we're getting students who recognize that to get a four-year degree, 
you can actually go to Bristol Community College, do two years, transfer to one of the state universities or UMass, and basically save 20 or 30,000 bucks. So that's a pathway that we try to make sure we can, we can service. But then beyond that, increasingly, about a third of our students now are adult learners. They have different needs. All of our students work. So when we talk about interface with the business community, things like co-ops, paid part-time jobs in these fields so that the students can do the three or four years. Everybody thinks community college is two years, but if you've got two kids and you get a job and, and you're taking nine credits, that's going to take you three years, four years. It doesn't matter. Those people succeed because they're there because they want to improve. So we're getting close to where we're going to take a break. But before we do, uh, last question for this segment that I have for both of you is why a community college as a venue to address these issues for businesses? Well, we're here. We're in your neighborhood. Uh, we hire professional faculty that, that we, we laugh about a little bit. You know, our adjunct faculty are doing some of these corporate training programs if they weren't delivering that service for BCC, they'd be on a plane to Phoenix or be a plane to San Francisco delivering a specialty seminar for a client out there. So beyond just the academic faculty, we have adjunct faculty who we recruit that are from the business community and are very, very highly respected uh, faculty members in their own right. So we, pr we deliver a very high quality product that's very responsive to these three or four niches, customer service, how do you deal with multicultural customer service, lean and efficient manufacturing, or lean and efficient office operations, um, and this whole notion of being uh, customer focused and listening, as Carmen said, to what their needs, and then shaping our training, customizing our training to do that. And that's what a community college can do. It's harder for four-year institutions to do that. It's harder for private companies to do it sometimes because they're even a little rigid. This is the product, take it or leave it. We have the ability to customize a product that makes us a very unique asset. Because my, my observation again is that prior to Bristol Community College taking on this challenge, there was a void. Yeah, you had to get consulting services from Boston or Providence yes. in New York. And like I said, I think uh, on one of the other programs, we hear kind of routinely now, it's like, geez, I didn't know PCC did that. I thought I had to go to Boston. I had to hire somebody from outside the community. And Commons built this team, this expert team, that really uh, can do that for you at a at a very attractive price point. I think it's, it's our responsibility. You know, we are a community college that cares for the community. It's in our mission, and our par employer partners are, we work with them every single day, so we, we gotta respond to the co community needs. It's a responsibility issue. Jack, well, Jack Sprague occasionally borrows a play from Bill Belichick's book, and that play in this case is just do your job. Just do your job, that's our mission. Do our job, and do our job well. Well, you've been doing it really well. Thanks. And we're going to take a break, and we'll come back and want to talk more about the offerings available at the center, uh, because it's really important, in my opinion, for businesses to know what is there, because for many now, you have made a big difference. I want to get more into detail with you about that. Sure. But first, we're going to take a break for a public service announcement. We'll be right back after this message. Well, when I was um, little, I people said I would never really talk because I had autism, but I actually started singing around that age, and when I was about 11, Mom got me introduced to the idea of musicals. Hi, I'm Daniel Perkins, and I'm a theater major here at BCC. This whole place piqued my general interest, but it wasn't until I started dual enrollment that I realized I actually wanted to go here to get a good start. While I was here, I took advantage of the disability services here at BCC, and for classes that didn't involve theater, I, that was actually pretty helpful and the individuals there will actually help you get the accommodations that you actually need. A theater is also an outlet for people with autism because it teaches them empathy, how to communicate with people, and gives them a chance to really voice themselves, something that I don't think is really heard every day, and I feel like we have a chance to do so. I was worried that because of my autism, which to me now is not really a barrier, but more of a key, I, f I thought I was gonna have trouble with all the crowds and, all that and that I would struggle in school, but that's not really the case. I'm going to Bridgewater State University to p continue pursuing theater while pursuing a minor in English. And from there, I'm hoping to not just have a theater career, but a writing career. Anything that can get the message of people with autism heard shows that how far I've come from my early years to here right now. 
I'm looking forward to all these accomplishments and I'm hoping my graduation sets me off on that journey. <laughs> Welcome back to the Workforce Connection. I'm Rob Million. I'm the CEO of the Forbes Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry and our guests today are Acting Vice President of Workforce Development at Bristol Community College, Paul Vigent, and the Dean of the Center for Workforce and Community Education, Carmen Aguilar. Thank you both again for being with us. So prior to the break, we were talking about, in generality, uh, what has been accomplished at the Center for Workforce and Community Education. And I'd like to now get into a little bit more detail. Uh, maybe we should begin by talking about how the Center has developed and the divisions beneath the overall umbrella of the center itself. You know, what types of uh, industries are covered within the Workforce Institute and within the center? Sure. Uh, we have um, three main arms, but there are mo uh, more services than arms. <laughs> we have the community education uh, division or area where we serve the individuals who are interested in getting uh, any kind of training, sharpening their skills, getting to learn a new topic, or just to prepare for a new career, an entry level like a uh, you know, nursing assistant or personal care assistant or phlebotomy or other kind of uh, short certificate programs. So the community education arm of, of the center provides services and support then uh, as well they come in from the career centers and partnering with, you know, with the career centers and the WIPs, supporting those individuals with uh, out of, of, of jobs and unemployment and we support them on an individual basis as well. So that's community education in general. We have a also um, a significant group of people working with grants uh, that you know go and look for different opportunities to pilot new models or to identify new trends to support the needs of the employers, the community, and the college tying all together. Uh, so we have grants in all the different industry sectors and different kind of models. One of the industry sectors that we have been working really hard and it has been uh, very good in this area as well is the Renewable Energy Center. So we have significant efforts in solar, in wind, and weatherization, and you know we train different kind of levels of um, uh, tasks for employers, and we partner with them and acquire different kind of grants. We actually have a very uh, high quality green center training, weatherization training that we've been working and training a lot of people from the last five years. So it's a very successful experience. And we created the first wind certificate program, academic program that we deliver at New Bedford also with some partnerships and grants with the New Bedford leadership out there. So we, the green industry is something that we're always working with and we are more interested in continue working with. Did you want to mention the BPI Institute as well? Yes, so we've just recently have, uh, thank you, we just recently uh, acquired, we are the only community college and the only one uh, institution in the south, in the south coast uh, Massachusetts that will be providing um, BPI testing, which basically is for the crew chiefs, for those who work in the weatherization industry. So in order for them to be supervisors and get the highest credential, they had to take this test. And BCC is the new BPI right, testing right. center in the region and the only one in Massachusetts for community college. You just made my case about Bristol Community College and about the Workforce Institute and also about the Center for uh, workforce and community education, how you're ahead of the curve here. You're all well aware that the cost of energy is a top of mind issue for businesses. And part of the solution here is going to be uh, shifting into green technologies. And one of our problems that we have is that we don't have the capacity uh, in green technology to make that shift today. Mm -hmm. You're making that happen. We, part of our job is to kind of look over the horizon a little bit and try to anticipate, as Gretzky would say, where the puck's going to be rather than where it is now. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're dead on with this idea of wind. People think that the U.S. offshore wind industry is now dead because of Cape Wind. And no. with all due respect to that project, it's almost good that it's behind us because what people have to focus on is this windy area that's south of Hosnick Beach, 30 miles off that beach. If you look at a weather map or if you ever watch the weather on TV, when a storm comes out of North America, it goes through one place right there. So, you know, and Rhode five Island years right now, now is building an offshore. The first, the first project's in place, right, at Block yes. Island, and there's important legislation that Secretary, uh, that uh, um, Representative Haddad has uh, introduced to the legislature. Yes 
that would set the Commonwealth's energy uh, targets and goals for the next mm -hmm. 10 years or so, and, and hopefully that bill will include you know, a piece for offshore wind. So you just, like I said, you just made my case. Here you are, you're preparing the groundwork for right. those who are interested in getting involved in this industry, which is only gonna grow. Well, if you think of it, right, so if they're building windmills around here in five years, but you need yeah. an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree to get some of the jobs in those things, we have to start now. That's right. So Blue that's uh, that's one a good example. Another good example of Commons work, and maybe she could talk a little more about, is this focus on efficient manufacturing, lean technology. Yes. We have a project for which we're right now recruiting companies from far over to join us in a cycle that's going to be starting in the fall. Could you, yeah. could you yeah, talk about that? Yeah, we have a partnership with Industrial Park, you know, with collaboration of the Chamber as well. And what we have been doing is we have several companies that uh, from the Industrial Park and Fort River join this venture, and we are training them in efficiency and productivity and, you know, teamwork, communications, and other very core aspects of increasing their level of productivity and efficiency. So there's a consortium of several companies from the Industrial Park, and we going to right now you know mm -hmm. continue recruiting participants from the different companies who would like to come and learn how there is new techniques to improve their abilities to help the company better so uh, my team with Robert Vitello are always recruiting there and helping the company so if anyone mm -hmm. from the industrial park is listening now they can immediately talk with their employer and tell them that they want to be part of this effort. And that's going to go on for about another year, right, Carmen? It is, it is, and yes. it's no cost to, to the employer to have the ability to um, to work with us in this particular um, partnership. And that leads to the question of who, what companies should be communicating with or reaching out to Bristol Community College and to the Center for Workforce and Community Education about partnering? You know, who, who should be out there? I mean, should it be the bank? Should it be healthcare industry? Should it be manufacturers? What type of manufacturers? Who should be calling you guys and why? Well, we work with all the industry sectors, uh, hospitality, manufacturing, healthcare, you know, all the ones, uh, and small business, large business, all sides of business. So if, if there is one that has, a, has a, a company, even it is one or two people company, and they're looking to improve their employer's skills or they are looking to grow, with workforce skills, here we are. It doesn't matter what size of a company is or what their needs are. What we're gonna do is what I mentioned before, our approach is to sit down with them, listen what their needs are, and one or three arms will support them, and if we don't have it, we'll develop for them, and if we don't have it and we can develop it, we're gonna partner with whoever. You know, Our academic area supports us a lot, and other organizations and our network as well. So it's just anyone who has a a, a company could be our partner. Yeah, and I think too something worth discussing is uh, the agility within the center, and I know this from personal experience and having worked with uh, your organization over the last three years, the ability to tailor programming to the direct needs of businesses. And that's what I was talking about earlier is I have not seen, I have not observed a program like what you do here. I see cookie cutter programs out there at other institutes. I have not seen something that is, uh, is agile and as business focused, needs focused as what you produce here at Bristol Community College. I know that's an overall endorsement, but no, it's, very, it's that's easy that's to do because that's it's very real, important. it's uh, tangible. It, and it, thank you, that's a very important part of how we do business. So, so this idea I was saying earlier, you know, listening to the customer and making sure that you're delivering the training product that that customer needs is where we start. We don't presume, we, we can train about any area you need with the yes. community college faculty and the adjuncts, but when you're in talking one-on-one -on, -one on a company, you need to understand what they need, and that's the essence of entrepreneurship in all of your companies. What Con was saying was important earlier, too. So many Fall River companies are small companies, so you really can't sustain a group of 10 or 12 people going through. But that's why we build these cohorts. So if we get two from you, and two from you, and two from you, and two from you, and two from you, we have 10. I hope that was 10, so. But you know, you get the idea. We can build a cohort of companies with similar needs mm -hmm. and teach them that. We always do this, by the way, at the workplace. So you don't come to Duval Street if you're a company. We go to you. Yes. And, and the other piece is that we really focus on the quality and the, and the highest uh, productivity. So it has to have a return on investment and a, and a benefit directly to the company and the trainings that we're doing. 
So, or, or, you know, or approach to the business when they're thinking, I want to improve, I need to do this, I need to do that. Just think about the opportunity to approach to the community college here at Bristol Community, and, and, and we will be happy to, you know, sit down with you, and if we don't have the solution, we'll find it, but for sure we have one. And here are a couple of bigger buckets, Sophie, of members. So, as Carmen said, we really developed a specialty niche in manufacturing and advanced manufacturing. So it doesn't really matter what you make, but if your process involves sophisticated machinery, computer-assisted manufacturing, learning how to produce smart products, clean products, high-value-add products, that's, that's good training that we offer. If you're in the healthcare industry, we have a whole array of medical health professionals uh, through medical records. One of the things about the new data entry for medical records is that Fundamentally, the whoever's entering an electronic data record, last thing they enter is what's your certification number. So there's this certification process. We provide that certification to help companies like South Coast and Stewart get their people through so that they're properly certified. So in the health space. I have a, I have a recommendation for a new program for you. Uh, medical record entry for doctors. <laughs> because it's the doctors today who are directly inputting yes. with their own devices. You laugh, you jest, but if he's yes. entering a medical record, the dudes are going to need a certificate number <laughs> no matter what his, his doctor uh, yep, license just, says. So. But that's, that's the evolution that we're talking yeah. about, and that you guys are on, on top of this. One more product group that we think has sort of broad applicability is this idea of customer service. Right? It's so important for you to be customer oriented. So we have a very good program in how to teach effective communication, how to do effective customer service, how to do multicultural customer service, right? Because it's important to understand I'm going to be polite, but if when the customer, come in, customer comes in and you've got an attitude or a bias about that person's nationality or their age or their ethnicity, whatever, that, that kind of negates any kind of good customer service you're trying to provide. So we really integrate this idea of multicultural in, uh, in this competitive in, in the, environment, oh, you get yeah. one bite at the apple. Oh yeah, and you're done. So anyway, those those are the yes. big buckets yeah. that any size company, you know, we'll bundle you with a cohort of companies that have a similar interest, or we'll customize something for you specifically. That's very interesting. But those that are the you said three that. big yes. buckets. Yeah. No, it's very interesting that you said that, Paul, because I remember recently experiencing somebody saying to somebody else talking about the ultimate customer experience uh, episode is, the customer said, "Make me want to come back." <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's right on, because one of the things Carmen and I have learned is that w customers are attracted, these cl business cl clients sometimes are attracted more by the grant opportunity than by the fundamental content. And we're really working, fortunately, with a group of companies that the grant's sort of frosting, but they're in it for the cake. Yep. We're in our last minute here. My question is, and we should have probably said this earlier, but how do you get in touch with the Workforce Center? Who do you call, besides Ghostbusters, <laughs> who do you call to get in touch and get the ball rolling if you're a business in connecting and partnering with the uh, Workforce Center for and community education? So you could call, you know, the, the, the VCC general line, which is 508-678-28111. Uh, and my extension is 2158. You can call me directly or you can call Robert with Robert Vitello extension is uh, 2165 and we'll be here. Very good. It has been a very interesting half hour on the show. Thank you so much for being guests. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Thank you.